Hi, and welcome to Finding Your Way Through Therapy. The goal of this podcast is to demystify therapy, what can happen in therapy, and the wide array of conversations you can have in and about therapy. Through personal experiences, guests will talk about therapy, their experiences with it, and how psychology and therapy are present in many places in their lives. With lots of authenticity and a touch of humor, here is your host, Steve Bisson. Hi, and welcome to the fourth episode of my 100-episode week on finding your way through therapy. I am Steve Bisson. Please go back and listen to the actual 100 episode with Susan Rogendorf and Stephanie Simpson. Just a great interview and truly made me emotional, so I hope you can go and listen to it. And I told you I'd have a special today. And I told you I wouldn't tell you until you turn it on. And here's the most exposing thing I'm going to do on my podcast in a long, long time. I'm never not myself or not authentic, but I'm going to have my girlfriend on, Anna Meyer. Anna Meyer is a nurse for the last 20 years. She's been my girlfriend for about a year now. And I think that what people have asked me all the time is that, are you really like this in real life? And we talk about authenticity. I have a few supporters that are obviously know that that's who I am, but some of you may not know that. So nothing more exposing than bringing on your girlfriend so she can talk on your podcast. So here is the interview and pray for me. Well, hi, everyone. And this is probably the scariest episode I've ever done. This is the fourth episode of the 100 episode week. Yesterday, you heard the 100 episode actually, but today is someone that is very close to me that I love and I absolutely adore. Unfortunately, that is why I'm freaking scared. She actually asked for the interview, but she is such a great human being, truly love her. And I'm sure she's not going to destroy my character too much. Ha ha ha. <laughs> and the interview must will have to go well because it's also her interview to eventually become my administrative assistant in my job. So there's a lot of things riding on this interview. But I wanted to introduce Anna Meyer. Anna Meyer is actually my girlfriend. So Anna, welcome to Finding Your Way Through Therapy. Oh, thank you. I'm excited to be here. This is going to be a, a fun episode, I think. I hope it will be, even though I'm scared a lot, but we can live with that. Why are you scared a lot? Usually I have the parameters and I can tell people what not to do. Because, you know, I'm kind of running the podcast. But with you, mm-hmm. I'm not running the podcast. We're kind of equals because even though I'm interviewing you, you're my girlfriend. So we're equals. So that's why it's a little more scary. Not that I've ever treated any of my interviewees as not equals. But this one, I truly <laughs> have zero control out of, out of what's the next words out of your mouth are going to be. But hey, Birdie will have my back, I'm pretty sure, anyway. Mm-hmm. So the same, the same few questions that come up with everyone is the same thing. So how about now that I introduced you as to how I know you, how about you introduce yourself to the audience? All right. Perfect. Well, thank you for having me. I know this is my, this is a big episode for you. I'm very proud of you. Thank you. This is, uh, I know you work hard on all of your episodes and you look forward to not only having your guests, but being a guest on people's podcasts. So I think that that's really exciting. So I'm happy to be here. I know this is my kind of quasi interview for being your administrative assistant. I I run a tight ship, you know, so. That's what I heard. (laughs) Yeah. So I'm happy to be here. I've never been on a podcast. I've never done a podcast but I think this will be fun. It'll be fun to see what questions you have and kind of what come from those questions. So thank you. As you said, my name's Anna Meyer. I am your girlfriend, partner, whatever else comes to mind, right? And then... (laughs) Keep it clean. Keep it clean. My mom (laughs) listens to this. I always will. I always will. I am... A little bit about me, I guess. I've been a nurse now for 20 years. So I know you have quite a few first responders and some members of the healthcare profession on your podcast. So I'm, I'm happy to be here. Although I only speak for myself. I don't, I don't represent an organization or anything like that. I only speak from my experiences. And aside from being your girlfriend and a nurse, I'm a dog mom. That's it. To my little... Mixed breed birdie who loves you. 
Birdie always makes me smile every time I see her. It's interesting that I've put only girls around my, you know, females or girls in my life. So maybe I need to talk to my therapist about that. But speaking of which, <laughs> mm-hmm. there's a standard question I ask all my guests. Mm-hmm. And the question is, have you ever been in therapy yourself? I have been in therapy. I think the the best line, though, and, and I think maybe to clear it up for people that think dating a therapist, right, comes with maybe being in therapy, but it's not. No. You can remind people what the first thing you said to me was. One oh, of the you you want me to say it? No, you, you deliver it so much better. Okay. I, I'm just a host here. Okay. Yeah, the first thing you said. In fact, I think it was probably, it was one of the things that caught my eye in your dating profile on we met online for people that don't know we we did meet online and the profile your dating profile said in all caps with several exclamation points after i'm a therapist i'm not your therapist so anyway so you're not my therapist <laughs> no i i definitely I, there there is a lot of ethical issues if i dated someone i do therapy with yeah Yeah. So yes, you're not my therapist, but I have been in therapy before. I've been in therapy most recently in the past couple of years. And it's something that I I do miss not actively going now, but it's something I do miss. I had a great person, great therapist. So anyway, I think that therapy is important wasn't only the being a nurse during the pandemic that really drew me to therapy, but probably some of the relationships and uh, that I was in in the past several years. So I needed to kind of sort through some of that. And just for sp- to specify, she is no longer in therapy, but I am not her therapist, but that's how healthy I am, really. But all joking aside, I also found it funny because I can't wait for the people who possibly have dated before you to hear exactly what you just said, because that line was dedicated to them, not necessarily to who I was dating. But thank you for understanding and making you laugh with that. In therapy, obviously, this is the goal of this episode, 100 episodes in, we are working on getting people to see therapy in a good way. Mm-hmm. But let's switch gears because we are here for a specific reason. The funny part is I was looking for special guests. I had a few ideas. I and mean, obviously you've heard a few of special episodes so far. But the idea of coming on to my podcast is strictly Anna's. And when she said that to me, I was like, wow, that's a great idea. So obviously it's not like I said, oh, my God, begrudgingly, I'm going to put her on. No, I wanted because one of the things I've proud myself in my work and even in my podcast, is that to be as authentic and as transparent as I possibly can. There are privacy things that Mm -hmm. I absolutely respect. And obviously, this is something I'll always respect. And my guests may not have known that. But if they don't want to talk about something, I don't. And there are certain things about my relationship with Anna that you don't need to know about. But it's not bad stuff. It's just there's a difference between privacy and secrecy. Mm-hmm. I don't keep any secrets. I don't believe in secrets, but I do believe in privacy. And there's certain things that are private. So anything I talk about today has been approved by both of us, except the questions I ask and whatever her answer is, I don't know what the hell she's going to say next. But that's good. That's what the point of this Howard Stern type of podcast is anyway. Mm-hmm. So now you have all the time you want and you can explain to people, how is it to date a therapist? Oh, well, I think we need to clear up something first. So the first time you told me you had a podcast, I'm like, oh, I've never been on a podcast. I want to go on your podcast. I didn't really know what it was all about, right? I didn't know what to really expect. And then, right, you had recommended a couple episodes with some people that you've had on that I may find really interesting I think you had somebody that I thought was absolutely amazing to listen to. I believe you had a pharmacist on at one point who was really great. That was really something that... Shout out Jake Nichols. Yes. Yeah, she was great. Um, Oh, that's a different interview. Yes. Jake Nichols was a man, but there was another interview, and I cannot think of the name right now, but uh, you're right. Yeah, she was was amazing. That was... I was on her podcast to to clear up. I was just the one explaining. that's correct. 
And then to you have our lives because we've been together for a little while now, right? Almost a year. Our lives have definitely personal lives, right? There's quite a few people that are in your personal life that have been on this podcast that I, I find absolutely, truly amazing human beings. So I think that the first part to answer your question about what it's like to date a therapist, one, you remind me frequently that you're not my therapist, which I know. And <laughs> for the record, I didn't do it as much as she claims I did, but I did it once in a while. And that is it. <laughs> the second piece. And I think, you know, I was going to bring this up. One of the first disagreements we had was over feelings. <laughs> And you, you got really upset with me because you were sharing your feelings. We were talking about something. And I remember I said to you, I'm like, oh, are we going to talk about feelings now? And you got really upset about that. And I was like, what is the problem? We can't always, like, we don't have to talk about feelings. And now sometimes I think we do it as a joke, but kind of serious. Right. I think right. that's our way of saying, ooh, I'm not sure I want to talk about this right now. Right. Either one of us will say something. I usually say, I don't really want to talk about feelings right now. Right. And you you know that that's my cue to say, OK, we don't, we're not going to talk about this right now. We'll we'll come back to it, but we're not doing it right now. Right. And I think that that with you, I know sometimes when you start to talk about feelings, I have to recognize that and I have to be okay with being vulnerable sometimes and talking about feelings. But we definitely have our moments where feelings, I don't, I don't really, I don't like to do feelings sometimes except for at the, at the dinner table on Mondays. Yes, that's how I get you. I go out to eat at your place on Monday nights and I get, you know, an hour of you talking about your feelings and then that's I'm good it. for the next, you know, week. I got to hope that I don't have something that in the following Monday night or we're done for two weeks of talking about. Stuff. <laughs> yeah, so that's, I think that's what it's like sometimes. But there's, all, all joking aside, the, the good piece, though, I think about this is that, and I've shared this with you, as I become a little more tolerant, right, of when people need need me differently, right? They need me to recognize that there's something that they need to express and to feel that they're okay expressing their feelings with me and that I'm a safe place for them to do that. And that's okay. Well, um, I think that I give credit, you know, I don't think we give enough credit to nurses in any type of setting, how many things they see that they need to just kind of like, okay, next, move on and do the next thing. So for better or for worse, and again, no nurses I see, of course, are like that, wink, wink. But it's hard because you need to kind of like put it aside because the next call is there. You know, I, I think that sometimes nurses, not unlike first responders, and by the way, a lot of them are EMTs, paramedics before they become nurses, in my experience anyway. They need to kind of like cut off their feelings. And, mm -hmm. then you, and you get a guy like me who goes, no, no, let's talk about it. Yeah, it's a huge pain in the ass. It is. I think that one of the, sometimes we don't spend enough time, though, processing some of those feelings and that our way of dealing with them is to just kind of put them aside and move on to the next thing because that's how the world that's how specifically in, in my line of nursing right I spent 20 years being an emergency department nurse so I think that for me a, parts of that are being able to kind of in that moment I take care of someone and they are truly some maybe some of these uh, some patients right it's their worst day of their life but I'm able to then move on to the next thing or have a conversation or kind of move it aside and I don't process it, right? But I think that one of the things now that I try to do is process some of that and be more 
not um, available, but maybe a little more vulnerable in that and recognize what I'm feeling. I think that you talked about it earlier, and so I don't think I'm crossing any lines here, but we can always uh, edit it if you don't want to. But, you know, you've had partners before that may not have been able to handle when you were having those struggles, too. So sometimes you transfer that to your personal life and you get a person like me who wants to talk about feelings regularly. That becomes yeah. like, well, very difficult for you. That's just my two cents here. I hope I didn't cross any lines by saying that. You didn't. I think that's important to recognize, right? Sometimes some people come with a small tote bag of baggage. And some people come with an entire luggage set. So you fortunately or unfortunately, probably for you, unfortunately, have a woman who comes with 41 years of baggage. And wait, what what, year? 41? (laughs) I know. I'm going to be 42 soon. And you've been dating since when you got born. This is really strange by the second. Let me write some notes here. (laughs) Right. Well, okay, so let's talk. I mean, since you start dating, right? Sometimes you're in high school, you're in college, whatever. I mean, it's all different, right? And it's different for people. But, you know, if you start dating for the better part of my life now, right? I've kind of taken something from each relationship. And it's either good or bad, depending on the relationship. And I brought it with me, the good, the bad, the ugly. Well, I'd like to say that it's just you, but I bring my shit down the road too. And I think that what, as we grow older, the bad part or the good part, depending on how you perceive it, I think it's good, but not everyone will see it that way, is that you know a little more what you want and you know what you've been through and you know definitely what the red flags are. If you don't recognize that when you start dating, I mean, we're we're going on a year right now and we've had our baggages, we've had those moments, but the hardest part, I think for many couples, and you correct me if I'm wrong, Anna, is that for me, I'm able to sometimes say, not all the time, because it's hard and say, this is really coming from my ex or from someone I dated. And again, nothing bad and nothing that I want to expose because it's other people's stories and that's not mine. Mm -hmm. I'm going to protect that. And same thing for you. There's stuff that comes up and that's because of an ex. And you're not trying to, and we're not opening any cans here either because that's her story and her, with her ex is not me. And being able to talk about that is really hard. It's almost as hard as feelings, if you ask me. Mm-hmm. I think so. I think that it's hard to recognize when certain pieces of you, not those good pieces, right? Those bad pieces come out. And you I don't know, have any, but please talk for yourself. Okay. <laughs> I, yeah, I'll, I'll let you work through that stuff where you talk about your own kind of bad pieces. But I think that the hard piece, right, is that when they, they do come up, when those kind of really hard things come up, you tend to like not want them to come out and then all of a sudden it's happening and you're like, oh God, this is it. This is the exact moment where it's like, this is what's going to seal the deal. He won't want to be in a relationship with me. He doesn't, right? I think part of that, right, is, is insecurities that I have that if I didn't hear from you or if I didn't have, if you weren't able to spend time with me or that really, truly that anxious attachment style, right, that I had to really work through and we had to build trust on but it was really important for me to be able to express to you what I needed from you in order to feel safe and in order to feel confident in our relationship and comfortable. And one of those you still do to this day, even if we have had a disagreement or maybe didn't see eye to eye on something, even when we're upset with each other, you still every morning send me a good morning text if we're not together. Well, I don't Just do kidding. it. We're never together thing. in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think it's, you know, goes back to Mark Scholes and the attachment style. That was an episode beginning of at the end of last year. Mm-hmm. But I think it's also kind of like realizing that relationships are not going to be perfect. And I think that at our, I've been 29 for over 18 years now. So it's pretty good. So I have a lot of experience being 29. 
Mm. But all joking aside, I know it's the same different baggage that I have now that I even had a year ago, two years ago. It's recognizing that too. Anna is someone who's helped me grow on a few things too, because the other thing that you learn from experience is that you bring your job sometimes to your private life and, you know, give credit where credit is due. And it's like, okay, no, no, just human. You're a human right now. Just don't worry mm-hmm. about it. You don't need to be soccer dad. You don't need to be a therapist, a podcaster, just be you. And, you know, I give her a lot of credit because sometimes you need to be called on that. And sometimes I accept it. Well, most of the time I accept it. Sometimes I grumble a little bit, but that's obviously your fault, not mine. (laughs) Yeah. No, I think sometimes you don't know when to turn it up, right? This past week, I've had some really tough, tough weeks recently. And this past week, I remember you saying to me, I'm here for you. Tell me what you need me to do. And I was like, I don't need you to do anything. I just need you to listen to me. You know, I don't need you to, you're, you're my partner, right? You're my significant other, but I don't need you to solve anything for me, right? I, I can do that. I just need to go to a safe place and be able to say all of that, that I needed to get out and then move on and I'm better, right? Well, I think that it's healthy also. I, I talk about this to, sorry for the therapist talk here, but I'm going to have to be doing that. It's still part of the podcast. I think the question I ask you is that you want me to just listen or you want me to offer you solutions? And I think that that's the best thing to do because men tend to want to solve shit. Mm-hmm. I know I do. I know the majority of men I work with are the same way. And women like to be listened to. They don't want to be told what to do. And they certainly don't want to be mansplained. And if someone needs to be explained what mansplaining is, like you can just direct message me and I'll explain it to you. But all joking aside, I think that that's the stuff that you learn from being in a couple for a while too, because there's times where I felt all the, any job is hard, period, end of story. Being a nurse is a really fucking hard job too. And sometimes you want to offer solutions because you, I've, I've worked in an ER for 15 years, give or take on a crisis scene. So sometimes I'm like, I want to give a solution, but she doesn't want that solution. So I go, Put the words back in your mouth. Put the words back in your mouth. I don't know. I feel like that. I do that sometimes. And then I go, okay, back, listen, mode, listen, mode, listen. Mode. Yeah, you do sometimes. And then I, I do remind you of that, right? I remind you sometimes. I'm like, I don't mm-hmm. need you to solve this for me. I know how to do it. That's what happens when you surround yourself with strong, independent women, right? Yeah, I don't know why I decided that in my life, but <laughs> maybe perhaps I'm also kind of like not intimidated because that's the one thing I give Anna a lot of credit because she's a very strong, successful woman. And for me, that doesn't intimidate me whatsoever. And I think that something that was kind of new to her because sometimes she'd be like, I have to do this. Okay, well, you know, no, don't, don't yell at me. I told you it was fine. I'm okay with that. I've got shit to do too. And I think that what I give there's a lot of things I admire about Anna, but one of the things is she is a strong, independent woman. Sometimes I want to kind of like, okay, you don't need to be independent about this part, but in all reality, I don't want to be explaining to her how to do her life. And that's something that hopefully I've done in our relationship on a regular basis. I think so. You do some things like Sometimes, though, sometimes it's like hard, right? Because you want people to be independent. And I was like, oh, can you just help me with this? Just do this. But then I think that if you would go and I can't think of a great example now, but if you would go and do that for me, I'd be like, why are you doing that? I can do that on my own. I don't need your help. <laughs> uh, we, we, we won't talk about vacuuming a uh, fireplace, but that's a whole different, that's a whole different <laughs> no, podcast. I think, yeah, that's a whole different podcast. We're not going to. That's a great there. example when I was like, I wanted you to do it a certain way and you were doing it your way. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is so painful. And then there was dust everywhere. And I was like, that was the moment that I was like, Ugh, I just need to chill out. You were doing it. It was fine, but. Just because it wasn't the way that I wanted you to do, it didn't mean it was the wrong way. And for the record, she's right. I did. Originally, I had it in the wrong direction, so dust went flying. But then when I fixed it, I did my own way, and it was working. But because the dust was still in the air, she had a response of, what's all this dust? What are you doing to my house? But we solved it, and we can laugh about it today. We solved it by 
you taking a deep breath and going out and buying some new pants or something, sweatpants at Marshall's. And it was 15 minutes and we both calmed down and that was the end of it. Marshall, please contact me for this free plug that we just did. So um, I don't make any money for the record. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but I think that was a tough dinner. Right. But I think that that's what we've done in, in any relationship, too. I think it's important, even though this is talking about me and you. The beginning was a lot harder than where we're at today, but that doesn't mean we don't have difficult moments. And if you expect a relationship to be perfect, then probably give up. And mm -hmm. I'm not even joking. Relationships are work. And sometimes we don't want to work. And sometimes we do want to work. Sometimes we want to put a graphic T on and sometimes we can't. That's just how it is. And even for those of you who are on YouTube right now, we'll see that I have my graphic shirt. I did this purposely because there's someone in this interview that does not like me wearing graphic shirts. But since she gave me this one. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> and then you need to be. I think that that if you've listened to this podcast for long enough, people know that you you have a a love for wrestling. They, it's very clear for those of you who know. And if you don't know, been a fan since age four. Yeah, and so the wrestling though isn't just we watch wrestling or you watch wrestling and then that's the end of it. It is carried on into the majority of the wardrobe that you have. So sometimes I have to, um, I'm like, hey, we're going somewhere. Please don't wear. You can say it. Shirt. You can, that God you can, mode shirt. You can say but Roman Reigns has a shirt that says greatness <sighs> on a different level. But it, the letters on the side says G-O-D, God. And Anna does not like that shirt whatsoever. There's God mode. Yeah, there's another one too. Acknowledge I, me, head of the yeah. table. I am there. plugging Roman Reigns. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't remember, but that is definitely something that I will probably. That's going to be. That is a boundary for me. That I I will not be attending any um, wrestling things. Great. And I'll never go to. What's it called? The Housewives of Blank. Any event that's around that. It's sad, though. That's unfortunate for you. Hey, I think you're missing out on the whole bloodline storyline, but that's just me. Never mind oh, talking about NGPW, but that's even beyond the scope of what we can do here. Yeah. So I think what's happening with wrestling is it's it's real, you know? It's real. Okay. Wow. Um, I may have to put someone on a, like we call them section 12s in Massachusetts, but we'll talk a little later on about just this. Like, just like the housewives is real. Again, you know, stay there. I think it's interesting because I always joke around with Anna, like we both watch stage shows. Mm -hmm. They're just very different, but very much the same. Oh yeah. Yeah, definitely. And uh, for those of you who did not know it's sports entertainment. Wrestling is I never want, I don't use the F word here. It's set up and it's something that they know a predetermined outcome. However, it is very difficult. I think the housewives are similar. They have, okay, cause of problems with this, but after that, it's kind of improv and whatever happens, right. happens. Right. So again, I think maybe it's because it's so similar that we don't like it. I don't. <laughs> but I watch it. Yeah, well, at least the housewives don't wear shirts that say God mode, so that's good. That's true. Just that's true. Well, so, I love me some housewives. And you know, Anna is also very happy to date someone who is a Montreal Canadiens fan in Boston. Mm -hmm. And she went to her first hockey games in the last couple of months. I have. Oh, that's where I was going with the with the wrestling thing. Thank you for getting me back on track. It was very therapist. Yeah. Um, it's, the, a, uh, it's a podcast host too, but <laughs> yeah, there are certain things that would be a hard no, but, but I was very interested in really getting into hockey. I really enjoy it. So we did, we went to two games out in LA. We had a tough experience on our way home. 
which you talked about. And I think that we shared this a little bit that both of our reactions were very different. Right. Right. So I think that it was very much of mine was I, and I had a hard time with this. I'll be very honest about that. I had a hard time that I didn't have a hard time. Right. And we had talked a little bit about that, that my, that after experiencing that, you know, during in that moment, I was very, okay, we just have to figure out what we're doing. It's very much this, like, and I ended up being involved a little bit with the uh, individual on the plane, but. I think it's okay. It's okay for to say, because I mentioned it in the podcast that prescribed benzodiazepine yeah. because we were having trouble with a physical restraint. She had something that we would consider in this field, a chemical restraint. We didn't have a syringe of stuff to uh, do it as one of the passengers had recommended and requested. Mm -hmm. But Anna was more than happy while I was taking care of my daughters to go and help out. And I think it's important for me to say that because I did share that on the podcast and since you brought it up, I think I can go there and say it again because it was very important because it probably helped calm the situation. No pun intended, by the way, just calm the situation for that particular passenger. Yeah. And I think that that's the hard part, of, like you mentioned earlier, right? That part of my work and part of the, the life that I live is very much like it's episodic, right? It's it's we handle this piece and then we move on to the next. And that was that moment for me. That was something that was finding out who needed the most support and where it was needed. And that was with you and the and the girls, right? And then it was, okay, that seems to have kind of leveled out a little bit. Then it was, how can I help and what can I offer? And I did that piece of it. And then I think as we often do sometimes in really tough situations we we add humor right I know that I tried to add humor and I think it was you know it was a really tough getting off the plane we got our luggage we were getting to the car and sitting in traffic and at the first words that we kind of said right we got in the car with the girls we were like Balthazar like <laughs> right that's how we broke the tension was to use a little bit of humor and then that was kind of it and and then I think as we both kind of processed it I just moved on and I didn't realize that you were I don't want to say struggling but that it had really impacted you in a way that you I can say struggling there's no no shame in that in my game yeah, but I don't think it really was struggling. Struggling sometimes, I think people think that if you're struggling with something, it like impacts the way in which you're able to like do your work and and kind of move on. You there there wasn't any of that. It was this own internal piece that you were like really having a hard time with. And I think that that in that moment, I really saw this. I saw you as not just, you know, my partner and, and my my boyfriend, right? But I saw you as a dad. And I'm not saying that I hadn't seen you as a dad, like interacting with the girls and things like that, but it was really seeing you as a dad was something that, that was hard. That was really hard. Well, it was not easy. And I think that when we were on the plane and on the way back, I, I remember thinking that, I was able to on the plane not to keep it very much calm because my crisis mode kicked in. And when you do that for several years, you kind of do good. You dating an ER nurse, her crisis mode kicks in. She was really good at it. You know, I processed it differently. And mm -hmm. there's that's just how it is. And that's life. And all I want to say besides that as not even a follow-up, but just as people would know, uh, my daughter went on a plane and came back and has had zero issues with it. So in some ways, you know, by me and Anna not doing our own thing, being in our lane, recognizing what we're going through or not, basically. And I think that that was fine. And not only that, we helped someone handle it. And I'll tell you what our best friend is, dark humor. 
And I think that that probably sealed the deal for some of like, I, I, I know my daughters are, you know, they're my daughters. So they probably have a weird sense of, excuse me, humor. But I think the dark humor that we did on the way back towards after, after the traffic yeah. really, really helped. So never tell me that dark humor doesn't work. Yeah, no, it definitely worked in that moment. But I, I think that it was important for, we didn't normalize it, right? I, well, maybe we did a little bit. I feel like I did quite a bit. I right? think it's like, oh, I think, just like I don't the world that we live in now. I think normalizing or at least saying, well, it was abnormal, but you were safe. Right, right. I think, I think so. It's not maybe normalizing it, but it's like, this is not something that's going to happen on every plane ride, but we were able to like, you know, shit happens and we're going to take care of that. I said shit a lot today. Anyway. You did. I know. I'm realizing that right now. But at the end of the day, like, I think my daughters really bought into that. And that's a good thing. Yeah. And they processed it differently than me and Anna, frankly. And that's okay. And that's good. And I think it's good to have a strong partner who's literally behind you. Mm -hmm. When you're going through that with your kids and being able to be there for each other, and yes, this time I needed it more than her and that's okay. And there's times where I'm sure that Anna's needed more than me and that's okay. That's life in my experience. It is life. That's kind of what we do, right? But now let's, uh, after we've been very serious for the last five minutes, let's, let's yeah. lift up a little bit of this seriousness. Okay. So now that you, everyone kind of knows our relationship and, you know, we're, I can only speak for myself. I am very happy. And like I said, it's not perfect, but I didn't expect it to be perfect. And it's okay not to be perfect, but she's probably the best partner I've had. Having said that, do you have any recommendation for people who might go like, gee, a therapist might be nice to date or I'm dating a therapist. What now? Do you have any advice for them? <laughs> Don't. Okay. She she shook her head. If you want to go on YouTube, that doesn't translate well on a podcast. But <laughs> no, <laughs> she said don't. Uh, interview over. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I was like, wait, we got disconnected. No, I, I do have. I think some of my advice, right, is that maybe my only advice really is that each person's going to be different, right? What they need out of a relationship is going to be different. I don't think that it would ever be the same. Like if I ever dated another therapist, I, they're not you. Right. I am the and, best. You're right. Yes. And <laughs> not, not, nothing like fishing for a compliment by setting it up for yourself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, I think that that part of it too, is that you have to learn that they have feelings too, right. That they have, they experience life, even though they spend all day or the majority of their days work is done sometimes just processing things. But just as life is a little bit different, right? And I can't imagine, and, and we've talked about this before. I can't imagine what it would be like to really just talk to people all day long, to hear things. And that there's a lot of I'm sure there's a lot of trauma that comes along with that, right? Hearing people's experiences. And I think that that is, uh, that's hard. And I think that early on in our relationship, we set boundaries with each other. We set some boundaries that were tough. And, you know, one of those boundaries is Fridays. And we talked pretty early in the evening on Fridays, but usually by Friday, late evening, we're done. Like we're both just kind of tucked out for the week and that's it. That's kind of like our not alone time together. It's separate of anyone else. And so that, that part is, that's our time. Okay. We can break a wall here if that's okay with you. It's Bravo time for one of us. And for the other person, it's SmackDown time. Yes. Let's break that wall right away. Mm -hmm. But no, and I think the other part that, you know, I, again, let's, I, I dated a few people, obviously, but you know, I had one long day a week that I do. And the one boundary that truly Anna understood is that there's some days right now it's on Tuesdays is my long day. Mm-hmm. 
There's some Tuesdays I, I finish late, which also affects because Anna starts early. So that plays a factor. But there's some Tuesdays where we might want to talk because we haven't talked all day. And she, and she goes, do you really want to talk tonight? I'm like, no, talked out, done. Well, I just want to say good night. And some days I'm like, no, we can talk. I'm fine. Or And mm-hmm. she accompanies me all the way. It's about a 35 minute ride to get to my house. And she accompanies me for the whole ride, essentially, or until she gets tired. But ultimately knowing that, look, it, there's days I just don't want to talk to people. Yeah. And knowing that, that it's not like I don't want to talk to you, Anna. I just don't want to talk to you humans is another great boundary that you understood very well because it, it was e- it's easy for people to feel offended by that. But most of my friends, I think all of my friends, and obviously you, Tuesday night I'm junk. I'm mm-hmm. just junk. And and I know I'm junk and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. But, you know, exa- I'm not sitting exactly t- sitting here talking about wrestling storylines and eating bonbons all day. I'm actually working my butt off and hearing stuff that sometimes can be very hard. And I think that the other boundary that you really understood and I give you a lot of credit is that. And I think the other boundary that we've done that's also very cool is that one day a week, it's our time. We eat together. That's when we have those feelings. And then depending on the night, we sometimes watch some wrestling. Sometimes we watch Jeopardy. Sometimes we'll watch a sitcom, but we'll do something together, just sitting together because we don't get a whole lot of time between a busy time at your job. And obviously I have a job too, and we don't live next door. So we have to find these complimentary times to work. And I think we do a fantastic job at that too. So yes, so everyone listen to our love story. That's what I'm saying. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> if only they knew it started over cupcakes or cake and oh well, yeah because you can share that unless you want me to share it well i think it's really funny that it kind of came out right in the story with with one of the girls the other day but it was oh she must have really wanted to meet you and i was like no i really love cake <laughs> and i was at a wedding and we were just like flirting at that point. And she was actually at a concert, if I remember correctly, in Foxborough, mm-hmm. uh, Massachusetts at the stadium. And I had sent her pictures of the cupcakes of the wedding. I was at, And she's like, oh, those look so good. I said, well, do you want one? And she's like, yeah, great. I said, well, I guess we got to meet tomorrow. And mm-hmm. so I went back, I was about to leave. I was literally in my car and I went back in and I talked to, we'll say the, one of the two parties in the wedding. And mm-hmm. I said, literally, I need extra cupcakes. And they more than happy, gave me a couple more cupcakes so I can go and uh, have my first date with you that Sunday. Yeah. Yep. So we did. You can meet through an app, but cupcakes, that's where you get through people's hearts. It is. I mean, we might be on this song. I mean, maybe that's the next app for us. <laughs> cupcakes. <laughs> Cup, uh, meetovercupcake.com. There you go. Yeah, there it is. Somebody takes that. We're really. Copyright, copyright, copyright. <laughs> I yelled it. I yelled it. This is on record. <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, maybe people don't know, too, that that we don't have the greatest track record for doing things. And that day was so blazing hot and humid and we were just in may in may just let me be very in clear may, in may in the northeast of the united states it was i mean we were just like drenched i also brought my dog on the first date because i wasn't going to leave her another day but and for protection and for, <laughs> that's right except then, except she loves everyone so who knows? yeah exactly she's not a, a great watchdog but we had that 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 was it and then what else did we do when it was like the oh we went and did that bike trail thing and we thought oh it's going to be nice and cool it'll be in the shade it was also like 100 degrees and humid and then for Christmas, we went to a Christmas this. gift that you gave me was Taylor Tomlinson. Shout out Taylor. Right. Yes. And so we went to see Taylor Tomlinson on the coldest day on record in the last 60 something years in the state of Massachusetts. And we we went to dinner 
And then we walked to the Wayne Theater and it was, it hurt. It was so cold out. You know, and I'm I'm going to keep it vague because I and sometimes you got to be careful with podcasts and people recognizing themselves. It was a great bonding experience for us because we had we have that. But I think what was even more bonding is what happened at the table next to us on that oh, yes. day. And I'm just going to say that if you have twenty dollars in your pocket, you don't necessarily return ten dollars worth of fries. You bought them. We'll leave it at that. But it was great because one of the things that I also think really is, I don't think of myself as a, whatever they call them, social warriors in this Mm -hmm. world, but I am a social warrior in some ways. And it was great to see that Anna was exactly the same way. And so we kind of knew that about each other, but that example of how angry we got. And if you want to know the story, DM me or Anna, Anna's information will be available, but I'll forward it for you. But I ultimately think that that was another thing that relationships aren't made on cupcakes and five hour walks. They're made on moments of, hey, look, I'm outraged about that, too. Or I really yeah. love that. And yeah, we may not have the same taste in predetermined outcomes. But nonetheless, we tend to both like predetermined outcomes and we can talk about those. Yeah. It was. I think that that was uh, one of those moments where I was like, oh, we are on the same wavelength and we we share the exact same. I think sometimes in this world, right, we forget that just because you have money doesn't mean you get to treat people any differently, right? As I joked around earlier, but surely, you know, yes, I have you on and it's a little different to have someone I'm very intimate with literally on um i mean we we talk regularly i don't know why you're Mm -hmm. laughing that's all i was saying i'm not laughing okay (laughs) but i also think that one of the things that both of our values this is the stuff that you know maybe we can leave on this because i think it would be a great like high we value humans and we Mm -hmm. value equity and for me the person who has nothing is as important as the person who has everything. If that's a, there's such a thing for both for the record Absolutely. and we treat him equally. Yeah. And I think that we've had a few moments like that, that it was just amazing. And our relationship wasn't made over the last year because we had long walks in the park and on the beach. <laughs> we had yeah. moments of difficulties, but more importantly, we had small moments like that, that just said that we had the same amount of values. So I'm going to leave it on that high note, unless you want to add anything. No, you did a great job. So I want to thank you. Thank you. For all the compliments. I, I, I can only pay you about $10 per compliment. I know I talked about 20 before the interview, but it's really 10. We'll negotiate that if you don't mind. Uh, okay. All right. Well, see, that's why I wanted it on the podcast. That way she can't ask for it later on. Uh, but all, joke, all joking aside. Thank you, Anna. It was great. And I hope everyone enjoyed the interview. Thank you. Well, that wasn't so bad. Thank you, Anna Meyer, for coming on. And Anna was amazing. So I hope you enjoyed the interview. I certainly did and wasn't as nerve wracking as I thought it would be. So I truly enjoyed it. I hope you did too. And join us for Friday's episode which will be with, again, returning guests that are being mix-matched, and um, I hope you join me then. Please like, subscribe, and follow this podcast on your favorite platform. A glowing review is always helpful. And as a reminder, this podcast is for informational, educational, and entertainment purposes only. If you're struggling with a mental health or substance abuse issue, please reach out to a professional counselor for consultation. If you are in a mental health crisis, Call 988 for assistance. This number is available in the United States.